just briefly, and I won't be with you long, certainly. I, I have something that absolutely has to have to share with you, and it is my belief that it is going to bless your spirit. Uh, I, I've been struggling uh, with some things uh, recently, and uh, I'll just be transparent because it is, I believe, certainly testimonies, which are trans, uh, which uh, certainly demonstrate transparency as well as uh, people keeping it real that uh, are one of the most effective tools uh, in spreading the good news of uh, the birth of uh, the birth death and resurrection of Jesus so I it, it, it pains my heart so when I see uh, once mighty warriors for the Lord desert the field of battle uh, and, and there's many reasons why this happens but uh, sometimes it'll be uh, sometimes it's it's really simple or small distractions that turn into this huge issue and these people are taken off the field uh, and most recently uh, you know a, a, a pastor that was certainly once near and dear to my heart demonstrated that at the end of the day uh, and he was once a mighty warrior for the Lord I watched him stand on the gospel and get thrown out of a backslidden reprobate Baptist church and even after that he just loved those folks but losing in his mind anyway uh, Jesus said he who seeks to save his life will lose it and he who uh, loses a life for my sake uh, shall save it but at the end of the day those scars from the loss of that pastorate uh, were apparently uh, too much for him to bear and he just refused uh, to stand on the gospel really any longer and over some years over four or five years he just continually declined uh, I watched it he pro false prophesied a dream he said he had about me but when he told me the dream I knew what the interpretation was, and that dream was focused on him. It really, it really wasn't about me. But at the end of the day, uh, recently, uh, the same man who said, "If I have to scrub toilets in order to be the man God wants me to be," and he said this with tears in his eye and weeping, and I was so encouraged. He said, "If I have to scrub toilets." To be the man God wants me to be, that's what I'm going to do. Three and a half years later, he didn't. It turns out uh, that, like most, uh, he was he wasn't looking any longer for his reward, his eternal reward from the Lord God. He was looking for a payoff, which turned into him getting a bigger church. And the same man who said, "If I have to scrub toilets," the same man who said, "We need to sell all we have and distribute to all as we have need," just like the apostles did was running around bragging about how because he got this big church now totally abandoned the sheep God given him totally abandoned him with that corporate move on move on up mindset uh, the George Jefferson mindset uh, has invaded the church moving on up uh, it has invaded it was bragging about a buying Italian shoes and I'm kind of not sure what that is all about or really what Italian shoes are and how he's going to buy his wife some luxury vehicle off, off the, the people of God. Nevertheless, <clears throat> that being struggled with, I was wrestling and said, Lord, you know, what is promise? What is the difference between promise and payoff? Payoff in this life. And this man took a payoff. And, and that's just kind of how it is. But I was reminded about how God promised Abraham we know in the book of Genesis beginning at the end of the 11th chapter into 12th chapter and even beyond that God made some uh, promises to Abraham and it began like this Genesis chapter 12 I will bless them that bless thee and he was talking God's talking to Abraham and I will curse of them that curse of thee and through you the whole world would be blessed we know uh, through the process of time that that turned out uh, that blessing turned out to be the Mashiach or the Messiah 
uh, Yeshua, who, whom the Western world calls Jesus. But what we also know that there were uh, God made certain lineal promises to Abraham. And part of those lineal promises, he made lineal promises, geographic promises, uh, eternal promises. I mean, God just laid it out for the man he called his friend, uh, Abraham. And the children of Israel went to Egypt, were in there 400 plus years. Uh, but when they came out, that promise for, of Abraham's descendants, and Abraham, uh, Abraham, God took Abraham up and showed him the land. And he said, all of this will I give to your descendants. Remember that. So that land was called Canaan at the time, and we know that today to be uh, the land of Israel. But the land, the geographical fulfillment or the geographical promise he gave Abraham was reveal, revealed in Joshua uh, chapter uh, 21. Now that, that uh, Mashiach or that uh, Messianic uh, promise uh, was given to Abraham it was again reminded to Israel in Isaiah the 53rd chapter and fulfilled in John in the Gospel of John or in the New Testament but at the end of the day most often people miss this they read the words of Jesus Yeshua they may walk out his example although those people are getting fewer and fewer certainly but there's a third part that we have to seize on that we have to accept that we have to fast that we have to pray over for revelation and that third part is following Jesus's movements <laughs> so we read Jesus's words we follow Jesus, well, we, we uh, live, we try to live out Jesus' example, but we have to read the Gospels, Paul's testimony, the Apostles' testimony about Jesus' movements. We know that uh, they, there's this uh, concept, well, it's not a concept, it's a truth uh, called the Trinity. Now it's, you know, uh, Yah or Yahweh, Yeshua, and Nara or uh, God, uh, Ye or God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, are called the Trinity. Really, uh, God cannot, uh, you know, God really can't be divided out like that. God is continuum, but we understand it as the Trinity. So with that said, promises of God biblically are always, without exception, revealed in that manner. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. When you read repetition in Scripture, uh, uh, Elijah would be the first one three times in the book of Kings after he slayed false prophets Jezebel said I was very jealous by the name of the Lord God of hosts three times Jesus prayed in the garden of Gethsemane correct three times Jesus uh, asked Peter lovest thou me feedest my sheep lovest thou me feedest my sheep lovest thou feedest my sheep so and, and there's so many more examples and we're documenting them uh, even as I uh, stand here but that's revealed in three and as it concerns recognizing promise God has made in your life you cannot possibly do that without understanding the movements of Jesus read Jesus's words follow his example but also follow his movements God is so God is beyond elegant I, 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 under, I don't understand how the vastness, but I know enough. Paul said, uh, I, I've, I, I, I haven't apprehended much, but this one thing I do, and I haven't apprehended much, but this one thing I do, which is the God we serve, Yah, Yahweh, is beyond elegant. Nothing goes to waste with him. Nothing, not a zip goes to waste with him and this is why it was just revealed to me that I the teacher must move further and re to recognize God's promises and reading his word and, and and walking out the example of Jesus to following and absorbing and replicating the movements of Jesus now I'm not talking about these sadomasochists around the world who nail actually put nails in their hands in the Philippines as a custom every year 
uh, during that pagan holiday, Easter, Ishtar, you know, that's a whole other story where they, they, they uh, hang themselves up on a, a cross. Others, uh, Catholics are famous, not that they are followers of Christ, Catholics certainly, beating themselves uh, to mimic the stripes from Isaiah uh, that, was, that were first revealed in Isaiah 53. I'm not talking about sadomasochism. This is what I'm talking about. Let me give you a few examples. In order to follow the movements of Jesus and seize on the promise, whatever that is, you have to realize, you have to view, and I'm going to use, there's many examples, but I'm going to use a few miracles uh, in this case. Jesus went to the house where a, a 12 year old girl, 12, again, 12 disciples, 12 apostles, 12 tribes, and the girl just happened to be 12 years old. The women with the issue of blood in people's mind coincidentally just happened to be struggling with that issue for 12 years. I could go on about that, but I'm not going to. So, and Jesus said something and these people got offended because they thought Jesus mocked. Jesus walked up, they know this girl is dead, right? And Jesus said, she's not dead, but asleep. <laughs> I, 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 Y'all, I'm serious. I mean, think about that. You think about that. Your cousin and your, your cousin and, or Kim folk, they lay in there, they ain't got a pulse. They ain't got a pulse. Ambulance done came, paramedics done uh, pronounced them dead on the scene. And somebody walks up and said, they're not dead. They're just asleep. What would you say? <laughs> I, I don't know what I say, right? But at the end of the day, Jesus says she just sleeps. Now, to our mind, this is, you know, simply a miracle. But every, uh, uh, Jesus walking, but Jesus is walking out or his movements demonstrated something that had to do with an event to come. Watch this. The Apostle Paul on the issue of not, of an issue of whether people are dead or asleep said this. And he said it, I believe, in 1 Corinthians. And he also said in 1 Thessalonians, very well-known scripture, usually attributed to uh, Thessal the, book, uh, the epistle to Thessalonians, but also said in Corinthians. Paul said, I show you a mystery. Paul went on to say that we shall not, uh, we shall not all day die, but be changed in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. And he said, and those who sleep in Christ. <laughs> and in another book, he said, the dead in Christ. But those who sleep in Christ, we shall not precede those who sleep. Jesus said she's not dead, but she sleeps. The Apostle Paul said that uh, those who were uh, passed away in the Lord uh, was very uh, specific in saying they sleep in him. The raising of the girl, the 12-year-old girl, was a forerunner or a throne vision of those who sleep in Christ being raised from the grave. You have to remember, Jesus said, uh, those who in me, though he told some people, uh, you, those in me, though you die, yet will you live. And that sounded absolutely crazy to most people. And truthfully, uh, that really sounds difficult for the carnal mind to believe. But that, the raising of that girl who was asleep. People say she was dead, she was asleep. The Apostle Paul reveals this mystery about something that's going to happen in what is known as the end times. And it turns out that he used the word sleep. Hmm. Let's talk about the cross. When I look at and try to follow the movements of Jesus. Long before uh, Jesus was crucified, he said this. He, he said, pick up your cross and come after me. This, these, are Jesus, these are words of Jesus. They're not 